What is up my crafting friends? My name is Carrie and welcome back to my channel. Now, I know in last week's video, I had several people to ask me what the water was in the background that they could see. I filmed at night, but you could still kind of see reflections off of the water. So I thought I would film today's intro in front of my big glass wall that looks out into the backyard. Now, let me see if I can adjust the, the brightness here a little bit. There it is. So you can see the pool and the lake and just underneath those condos over there is the beach and the Gulf of Mexico. And I'm not even going to lie. We absolutely love living here. It's just so much fun. We bought this house about two years ago now and we've just had a blast remodeling it. And if you want to follow along with that remodel, be sure to visit my blog, MamaDareCityIY.com just so you can kind of watch that whole transformation. We have just had such a blast and trust me, this house looked nothing like it does now, so you're going to definitely want to check out those before and afters. If you're already a subscriber to my channel, you know that every Friday I team up with a group of YouTube gals and we bring you Fab Collab Friday. And now, if this is your first visit to my channel, you may not know about Fab Collab Friday, so you are definitely going to want to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any notifications because the girls that I collab with are just out of this world and we just bring you some amazing DIYs. So are you ready to see what today's theme is? Uh, I know y'all have all seen these fence panels at Dollar Tree and y'all know, yeah, you can just stick this in your yard. It's kind of cute. Kind of has a little scroll work here. But we have challenged our group of collab girls to do something fun and wild and crazy with these fence panels. And I can't wait to see what everybody came up with. Now, I will tell you, I did do two projects. One project was planned, but the other project was totally impromptu. It was improv. I totally made it up as I went along but it actually turned out even better than I had pictured it in my head. So you're gonna to wanna to stick around and watch both projects. Now, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. That way you do not miss out on any of the notifications of the new videos that I upload. Now, I will link that playlist down below so you can check out all the other girls that are collabing with me this week. And when you visit their channels and you watch their videos, be sure to leave them a comment and let them know that Mama Dares to DIY sent you so they know exactly where you came from. Okay, y'all, that's enough talking. Let's start DIYing. All right, y'all, this is what we're going to use for our challenge today. Now, I did pick these fence panels up at the Dollar Tree, and I also picked up some of these little box signs or whatever. Now, they measure roughly six inches square and usually for all of the seasons whether it's valentine's day or saint patrick's day or easter they're all pretty much the same size so we're just going to need one of these today i'm going to use this one because this is what i happen to find in the store so we just want to get rid of this little hanger piece first i'm going to hang on to this because i'm pretty sure i'll use that for something now, you can use a couple of different things to cut your fence panels with. I happen to like to use these little um, box cutters. I don't remember if I picked this one up from Dollar Tree or Dollar General. It might have been Dollar General. And you can also use utility scissors. Normal scissors may not be tough enough to cut it, but when I'm doing just straight cuts, I do like to use the utility knife. But when we're starting to cut these little curved pieces, sometimes the scissors work better. If you'll just score it and pop it, you'll end up with a nice clean cut. Okay. My space isn't quite big enough here. Let me move everything out of the way, get myself situated. And I will hold on to these little guys because I may be using them for another project. But at the moment, I'm not 100% sure. But I'm going to hold on to it just in case. So I've got two sides here that have a full edge. I've got a left and a right. And it doesn't really matter which one of these that you go with. You just want to start off with one of these. We'll just take our utility knife. 
and score. Okay, so there is one of my pieces. So now I do want to go ahead and cut all three of these apart. And these, we're just going to cut straight down the center here. It doesn't matter. We don't have to cut all the way to the edge like we did this one. But I do need this piece for a reason. But we want to take our next three pieces here and we're going to make a cut just underneath the bottom just where these kind of meet and right there okay so now that we've got all of our pieces cut we have three pieces that look like this and then we have our one big piece here now, we want to take our little sign, we're going to flip it over. We're going to first start off with just hot gluing this one piece on here. Now, I'm going to be using my Surebonder hot glue gun today, and I'm going to be using the Tough Sticks. Now, these Tough Sticks are so awesome because they are just what the package says. They are tough, tough, tough. And I love that this little fence piece here is the perfect width of our sign. I'm going to give this just a second to cool off. And then I'll take a little bit of hot glue and just seal this on the back here just so that it doesn't go anywhere. Okay, so now we want to take one of our little fence panels and find the one that is the least janky looking, I guess. This one looks like it's pretty even on both sides, so this is the one that I'm going to use for the front piece. Now, our little front piece is going to go right here, and then we're going to put two little pieces at the sides. Let's make sure. That one's going to go here. And this one's going to go here. So I'll put a little glue on one end. And I'm also going to put glue on the bottom here. Alright, now I know you're probably looking at this going, girl, what are you doing in with this mess? That's a hot mess. But let me tell you, once we get this painted, you are not even going to notice. And see how this right here is not seamed together? Look, we're going to do a little trick here. I'm going to take some hot glue. Just going to fill that hot glue in. And once it's all painted, you will not even notice it. The paint technique that we're going to be using on this is very camouflaging. Like it's a great, great technique when you have a surface that's not perfectly even because it is sort of a shabby chic finish.
Now, if you've got a bead of hot glue that's already dried and it's not as even as you want to, you can just take the tip of your hot glue gun and just sort of melt that back in and that will make that glue sort of melt back into itself. All right, now I'm gonna go back in and just reinforce my seams here. And I'm really shocked at how sturdy this is. Okay, so now I just took a little, one of my little scrap pieces here, and I just cut me two little pieces so that I can hot glue those pieces here, just so that it looks more seamless. Again, I'm going to fill my little hole in here with my hot glue, and you are not even going to notice that. I'm gonna go in and fill this part in with hot glue. Just like that. Okay. I'm gonna also add a little bit of glue here. like I said, I know it looks kind of crazy at the moment, but once it's all painted, you will not even notice this. Okay, so after I get through hitting this with a warm blow dryer to get rid of all my little cobwebs, I'm going to go in with some Waverly chalk paint in the color Elephant, and I'm going to give this one nice coat of paint. Don't worry about doing two coats because this is just going to be our first coat. I am going to go back over that with some of my plaster color. So first color is going to be the elephant. So give me just a second to get rid of all of my glue gun strings and to get this painted with my elephant and I will be back and we will start on our plaster color. So stay tuned. Okay, here she is. I promise you, you will not even notice what this looks like when we get done painting our white. Now, I will tell you, this is super, super sturdy. Now see, this is where I told you it kind of looks rough, but when you paint it, you won't even notice it. So now we're just going to take our plaster paint, and I just have a little chip brush that I've dampened. I'm just going to hit this. I still want some of the gray to show through, but for the majority, I want it to be white. And now I'm going to take a little wet paper towel 
and I'm just going to pull some of that white off. All right, y'all, our first project is done. Now, I am really loving how this turned out. I think that having the two different colors totally makes it pop. Now, you could go in and you could paint this all white. You could even paint it silver. You could even do the galvanized technique that I showed in the previous video that I did with the cake plate. And if you missed that tutorial, I'll be sure to put a link of that up above in one of the cards as well as down below so let me show you what we're going to do with this now that it is done painted so i picked up one of these candle holders from the dollar tree and y'all look how pretty that looks just sitting in there you could fill this with flowers but i plan on putting a candle in it and maybe a little bit of greenery picked up some of these ferns from the dollar tree Let's just see what they look like in there with that. That's kind of pretty. I kind of like that. I think it's really, really pretty. Now, another thing that you could do with this along the same lines is instead of making this a candle holder, you could make this a wall sconce. So if you just drill a little hole here, then you can actually drill a hole through your little base here. Now you're not gonna to wanna to hang it from here, although you could because it's super sturdy. But I would drill a hole through here and then screw that part into my stud on my wall. Now, if you decide to do that, it would even be pretty to take another piece of your fence here and make a piece on the bottom. But as long as you hit a stud, this would be really pretty to hang like this from your wall. And I may do one like that so you can see an example. But another thing that you could do, and instead of adding this back part, you could put four pieces around the back side here and you could flip it over and you could make yourself a nice little stand. I always use risers and stands in a lot of my decorating and this one would be super pretty like that. So those are just a couple of options that I had thought that you could do with this same technique. I've got my candle holder tucked inside my bookcase and I just absolutely love how it kind of brightens up that corner there. And the touch of the spring flowers just totally sets it off, don't you think? So this is what our candle holder looks like before it's painted. And this is what it looks like after it's painted. I actually made myself a pair of these. And I had all of these pieces left over, and I thought, you know what, I hate to just get rid of those, so let me see what else I have in my Dollar Tree stash, and let's see what we can come up with. So I found one of the little shower caddies that you pick up at Dollar Tree, and I went ahead and cut off this second shelf. And I apologize, I thought my camera was on when I did this, but it was not. But I just used a pair of my husband's wire cutters and just clipped those off there. It actually came off really easy. Can y'all hear the rain? It is really coming down out there. Okay, so now that that is totally gone, we can start putting this little thing together. And I'll be totally honest, I have not tried this beforehand. I'm just kind of winging it. But I kind of have this idea in my head. So I've got two of these pieces, and they were like this, and I just cut that little extra piece off. But I think that kind of looks pretty. Like that kind of looks like a little, kind of makes like a little heart. So I think I'm going to glue these together. So 
So I need a little glue here. Let me put this down. I think I like it coming down further, even though they do overlap. I think that looks a little bit nicer. Maybe like that. Let me go ahead and cut these pieces off because I know I'm not going to need those. So let me just get rid of these. And I'll do that for this piece. It's looking like something. I'm just going to keep going because I have faith that it is going to work out. Now, I did cut two of these little pieces off of right here. And I'm just going to see what they look like. Hot glue in those there. I'm kind of digging that. What do y'all think? Kind of groovy. So let me go ahead and just put some glue in this. If you flip it over, you can see that it just kind of fits down in that little groove. Now, you may have to, you know, play with this and move this around so that it kind of fits down in there. But I think that's what I'm going to go with. Okay, this may be totally crazy, but I'm going for it anyway. I'm fixing to glue this side to here. I think I have lost my mind. Actually, this one needs to be a little bit shorter.
so far so good. Now I'm going to repeat the process for this other side using another one of these pieces. Okay, so I've gone ahead and just glued another one of my little arch pieces here down on the bottom. Now, I will tell you, I was not liking the way that looked just sitting on top of there. So I took this off and I'm going to re-glue it and I'm going to slide it behind there and just let that rest there. And then I'll glue it like that. I think that just kind of takes some of the bulk out of it. And then I'll take some twine or something and just cover up this messy hot glue look. Once we get everything glued into place, I will flip it over and just go reinforce the backs of this with more of our glue. But y'all, I'm really surprised at how sturdy this is. Like even this piece that's just standing here is really sturdy. And these little pieces that I glued on here, just, you know, they're not going anywhere. They're supported by the weight of this. So I need a couple of more little details before we add the finishing touches. And I'm gonna take two of my little pointed edge pieces. And I'm just going to glue those. Down to here. I want to add two more pieces here, but I don't want them to go all the way to the edge because I've got something else planned for that. So I just want to sort of cut these at an angle. Maybe. And if it's not perfect, I'll just fill it in with my glue, remember. Eh, it's close enough. I guess I should have cut my second one before I glued it, the first one down. Oopsie. Yeah, that one's just a little bit too long. I'm going to cut it off. That's better. Okay, I know it looks crazy at the moment, but I can see it coming together. Let me fill this in with our glue.
and that is pretty much done. So let me give you a little sneak peek of what else we're going to be doing here. So I've got these pieces of scrap wood that I had left over and I cut them. They were actually already the same size. I didn't even have to cut them, but they're roughly, roughly 11 inches. I'm going to put us a little shelf here. I'm going to put us a little shelf here and it is just going to be absolutely adorable. I love it. But before I do that, before I add these in, I do need to bend this top out just a little bit because I'm going to add in some of these little jars to go right in here. So I just want to barely kind of bend that top piece out. You don't have to bend this part out because it's going to be covered up with our, with our shelf. You just want to bend it so that it arches a little bit. Isn't that going to be cute? And I'm going to use the same painting technique that I used for this, so stay tuned for that. So before we paint, let's flip this over because I will forget. Let's just add in our glue to reinforce all of our seams. Okay, now once all of my glue is nice and cooled, I'll take my blow dryer and I'll get all of these cobwebs off with a nice warm blow dryer. So one of the last things left to do is just to take one of our little toilet plungers or any dowel and I'm going to cut it to the same length as my shelves here and you'll see why in just a moment. So give me a second to cut this. I'm going to go ahead and paint. I'm going to go ahead and trim off my glue here and paint this piece while I'm at it and when I come back we'll be ready to put it all together. So give me a second and we'll be right back. Okay, y'all, so I've gone ahead and painted one coat of my elephant paint color onto the piece. And I just wanted you to see what I was talking about, how I'm not going to paint everything gray. My, my wall is white, so I kind of want these pieces that don't actually flow into the design to just sort of blend in. And this will all be painted over with my white paint too. But it's I'm going to antique it just like I did on our candle holder. Now, I know this right here looks a little rough, but once you see what I've got planned for that, you will know why I didn't really take the time to sort of fill this in. So stay tuned for that. So this is not quite dry, so I'm just going to lay this to the side. Okay, so while this is finishing up drying, I want to move on to our little shelves. Now, I really love this stain that I've got going on here. But y'all, I've got a little secret for you. This is not actually stain. I actually achieved this look with paint. And I'll show you exactly how I did that. It's so simple and easy, and you don't have to wait for the stain to dry. Isn't that a pretty color? So this was just scrap wood that I had laying around the garage. And y'all, it totally annoys my husband that I keep every little scrap of wood that we have left over from projects. But it's things like this is the reason that I do, because this did not cost me anything. It's just a one by four and I have it cut down to, this is roughly 11 inches. Now, I also took a um, one of the plungers from the Dollar Tree, and I cut that down as well, and it's 11 inches, the same width as my little shelves here. And I'm going to use the same painting technique on the dowel. So let me show you how easy this is. So the color that I'm using today is Coffee Bean in the Folk Art brand. And I'm going to use a wet paper towel. Now, this doesn't take much. And you could get you a dish and dilute your paint down and whatever. But, you know, that's just a dish I have to wash. So if it can be disposable and totally throw away, then I'm down for that. We're just going to rub this in. I really do like this coffee bean color. It's sort of like the early American stain from Minwax. Isn't that pretty? 
If you want a darker color, feel free to give it another little thin coat. But the trick is going to be using your wet paper towel to do that. You want to make sure that you blend it in. Now, it would even be pretty if you wanted more of an antique look to go back in and hit your edges with a little bit of black paint. Also take some sandpaper and rough up your edges if you wanted some of your wood color to show through. Like there's lots of options that you can do with this painting technique, but I love that you don't have to wait for stain to dry. And I'm gonna do the same thing with my little plunger handle here that I did with this. So when these are dry, I'm gonna come back and we're gonna put it all together and draw. Also off camera, I'm going to paint this just like I did our candle holder. So when we come back, I'll have everything painted and ready to assemble. So stay tuned. Okay, y'all, here she is. She is coming right along. And I'm so excited to get this all put together because it is coming along even better than I thought it would be. I told y'all I did not try this ahead of time. And honestly, I was not sure if it was even going to look presentable or not. So I'm really excited to see that it's kind of coming along. So the next thing that I want to do is to add in some jute cord. Y'all know I use jute cord for pretty much everything that I do. It's kind of one of those must-haves. So I'm just going to flip it over and you can see I didn't even paint the back. It's going to be hung up so it doesn't really matter. Now I'm just going to just wrap this around. You don't have to put the cord on, but I didn't really love how I had hot glue seams showing. So I'm just using those to sort of camouflage. That little piece right there. I think I'm going to add in some here too. I'm just not digging the hot glue things. Okay, so now I'm going to add in my little dowel or my toilet plunger. And I'm using this as a towel holder from my bathroom. And just for extra security, I'm going to put my jute cord around that seam. Now, I'll be totally honest, my original thought was to put my towel holder underneath here, but I didn't really like the way that that looked when I put the shelf on there, and I think just putting it on the front here will help it to sit more out from the shelf, and I think that gives it a nice look. And I'm just going to use an X motion here. So we'll go over the front. Just like that.
and that's really secure. I don't think that's going to go anywhere. Oh my gosh, I'm loving this, y'all. Okay, so now I'm just going to put my shelves on, and I will secure these down with hot glue. Okay, what do y'all think? Let's put our jars in and see what they look like. I think I need to dirty up these. Maybe I'll make those a little rusty. But y'all, other than that, this is pretty much done. Now I will use this in my bathroom and I'll just put like Q-tips and little cotton swabs in there. And then this little shelf, I'm not sure what I'll put there, but then this is going to hold my towel in the bathroom. I'm really excited about how this turned out. So stay tuned and I'm gonna go hang this up in the bathroom and I'll be back to show you what it looks like. Here is my shelf all hung up in my bathroom and I absolutely love it. I ended up adding in some soap in the little dish and putting it on the bottom shelf. And then of course I painted the tops galvanized just like I did the cake plate in a previous video. And if you want to watch that video, I will put the link to that above. But I just love, love, love the way this turned out. That does it for today's video, y'all. I really hope that you are inspired to grab your own fence panel from the Dollar Tree and make something fun and fabulous for your home. If you do, be sure to tag me on social media. If you're not already part of my Facebook group or if you don't follow me on Facebook, I would love for you to do that. I'll put the links to that down below. I, I do have a little group on Facebook and we just all post our creations in there. We just have such a blast. I just love hearing from my fans and I absolutely love seeing what y'all make. So be sure to share those with me. If you post them on social media, tag me in those because I would love to see them. And until next time, happy DIYing, y'all.